So the number one problem that I see in the real estate industry is selecting a camera to use. This is a question that I get dozens, if not hundreds of times, which camera should I be using? At the end of the day, it's way more important to understand that audio and content is the most important, but we also want to strive for incredible video quality. And so you can do that obviously with just your cell phone and with a lot of other different cameras that you know I've bought in over the years. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is discuss you know, the six, eight different styles of cameras that I bought, including this $1,500 one that I'm looking into right now, which one is the best for real estate. And I'm going to also talk about pros and cons of using these dang cell phones. So I have basically bought six to eight different cameras. I'm going to go through a bunch of the different ones and which ones work best for real estate. So let's start with the story. And I remember when I first started shooting videos, you would go out there and, and you'd see on the, on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, all these realtors dressed up to the nines, super glossy, slow motion videos. And I thought, that's it. That's what I got to have. So the biggest mistake I made first and foremost was hiring a videographer. Yes, I hired a videographer. I got one video shot. It was about two minutes long and I paid about $1,200 for that video. It got me no business and there was no connection in that video. So paying thousands of dollars for the high production stuff, it doesn't work. Um, and as you scale, grow, maybe you get into luxury, you might have to do that to tailor to your audience. But I've found ways, you know, to get doctors, lawyers, professional athletes, everybody reaching out and calling us. And it's because of the cameras that I've been able to um, easily use. And so that's one thing we need to realize is how easy is it to use these cameras? So first and foremost, the phone. Okay. Everybody talks about, oh, you just have this phone in your pocket. You can use it. That's great. Hey, I started with a phone. Honestly, it was, uh, I think it was back when the iPhone six or seven, one of those two. So it didn't have built-in stabilization, didn't have wide angle lenses. And so I've got it back in the cabinet there, but I had clip on lenses. So I would clip an extra lens on here just to get wide angle. And then I had the, uh, the gizmo, whatever the gimbal, it was $180 and that would hold it. But once I put the clip on lens and, and the microphone attachment, it was too heavy for the gimbal. So now I'm hundreds and hundreds of dollars into a bunch of accessories for this dang phone. But here's the biggest problem that I have with people using their phones for TikTok, for Instagram, that's fine. Doing quick little short 15, 30 second videos um, for Instagram reels or TikTok, you'll want to use the phone and it's very simple. But long form content, in fact, 67% of people are making purchasing decisions after watching YouTube videos. It's the number one platform on planet earth for purchasing decisions and it's long form content. And see what happens when people use their phone, this is what happens. Hey, look at me. I am the best realtor of all time. And I'm looking at myself in the screen because I'm forgetting to look right into the lens. And so I get, again, dozens, hundreds of agents, Jackson, we check out my videos and the whole time they're sitting there and they're looking off to the side because they stare at themselves. So if you're going to use a phone because it's just budget friendly right now, do not film with your screen open like this. Make sure you turn it so that you can only see the lens right there. If you do turn it this way, I would cover it and make sure you look at the lens because I've seen it time and time and time again. Even if you tell yourself, do not look at yourself the whole time during the video, every once in a while, you're gonna look and make sure you're in there and it gets very awkward. You will make terrible videos, even if it's an incredible video, if you sit there and stare at yourself. Secondly, the one thing that drives me crazy with cell phones, and again, this is coming from somebody who shot thousands. I have 11 different YouTube channels. I shoot Instagram, Facebook. I've shot thousands and thousands of videos. And so I come from a lot of pain points when I speak. Shooting with a cell phone, I always forget to turn it off, right? I, I don't turn it on to airplane mode. And I could literally turn it on to airplane mode, smash it with a sledgehammer and pitch it out of an airplane. And I'm still going to get 47,000 notifications. There's like zero way you can shut everything off. But when you do forget to turn it on airplane mode, and that's why I like, and I like doing long form content, you're going to get notifications and it shuts your phone off and then you lose your train of thought. And it just makes piss poor videos at the end of the day. And so I did it at the beginning just because I had to, uh, but there was a lot of pain points and I remember losing a lot of footage and, and I remember also um, forgetting where I was at all the time. So my, my videos were very choppy because I had to edit so much with all the distractions. So I get it. Some of the, I mean, the cell phone quality is amazing. I've done videos on how to shoot and edit with just your cell phone and I could definitely make channels with it, but just know you're going to be looking at yourself all the time and also 
those disruptions can really kill your video. So that led me down the path of, okay, I want, I love vlogging. I like getting out there and showing what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play in these areas because that stuff is getting searched 10, 12, 15 times a month more in, in YouTube than it is even in Google. So people are moving more than any time in the history of the United States and they want to see what the heck it's like in your city. So when I was carrying the phone with all those attachments, it was just a pain in the butt. And I also had to get the video footage off of my phone. So now I wanted to get a camera. So I started looking at point and shoot camera. I was going to go with one of the Sony, I think it's the A100s back in the day, about two and a half years ago. Um, and, and go with this point and shoot camera and vlog with that. And I started doing a ton of research and it, it still didn't have the best stabilization or any at all. And when you did look at it, there was a lot more settings to it. So I almost bought it. I'll never forget that. I almost didn't. It probably would have been a great camera, but right then the GoPro hero seven black came out. So that's, what's important. The seven black, because that was the first camera where they had the built in stabilization and the most wide angle lens that you can possibly create. And so that is what I ended up doing. This is a little bit more of a modified view of the original uh, GoPro that I created the real estate vlog with. If you look at the channel junkies, you know, the vlog, that's what I started, but it was before vlogging was a thing. So there wasn't all these kits. Now I love the GoPro. I shoot this in both linear and wide angle lens. So what is that? For my vlogs, I can turn it to wide angle lens and at an arm length, I can get four, five, six people in there. I can fill up and you can see plenty of space around me. Now, Jackson, I got to shoot 4K. Everything's going 4K, 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 4K. It's all about quality. No. At the end of the day, I set my, uh, my GoPro to 1080 at 60 frames per second. And you videographers out there are going, oh my gosh, I only shoot it. I don't care because I've learned with thousands of videos and doing $150 million in production all from my videos. It's not about 4K. And secondly, 4K doesn't make your video 10 times more clear. It's just a larger um, screen. So when you go into your editor, that just adds another step. So as you're learning video and you're learning editing, now you have this file that's three, four times bigger and it's bogging your computer down. Now you have to go in and pick a 1080 frame out of this 4K frame that you have. And it just adds a lot of extra step. Now you're gonna be shooting a lot of these videos that really bog your computer down and editing is the hardest thing for your computer, period, if you don't have enough RAM and internal space. So I love 1080, it works amazing. I even shrink my files because what's coming out, when you watch you know, YouTube on these things, it's already coming out at 720 anyway. So they're compressing it a lot. I shoot at 1080. So this took away everything that I needed. I could shoot wide, I could run down the street talking, and it was perfectly smooth. So the eight black, and they just came out with the nine black. I actually just, and I'm talking just, after doing thousands of videos with my GoPro Hero 7 Black, um, it finally went out on me and it's just, it was acting up so much that it was cutting clips off. And so I had the choice. I just bought this not too long ago and everybody, they go after these screens. The GoPro Hero 9 Black, it has this screen. You can see yourself. I didn't even do it. I saved the $150, $200 and got the GoPro Hero 8 Black. And I don't want the screen. If you're not in this lens, then you have the thing backwards. You're just not even in the film because it is so wide angle. So for me, I didn't want that that screen up front and they go, well, you can turn that off. So why pay $150 extra for a screen that you ain't gonna use and you're gonna sit there and stare at yourself. Again, I come from pain and I come from teaching. I've had a lot of realtors. Hey Jackson, just you know, started my channel. Can you check it out? And the whole time they're sitting there and they're looking at themselves, looking at themselves and it's very awkward. And they say, yeah, I got the new Hero 9 and they can see themselves. So if you can hear it in my voice, I see it all the time. If you're sitting there staring at yourself the whole time, it's going to make an awkward video. So I went with the GoPro Hero Black, uh, Hero 8 Black. So the built-in stabilization and these things just are amazing. I've got, you know, half a dozen batteries. And so what you can also do with this, by the touch of a button, you can go from wide angle. Lens, and that's why I like the 8 and the 9 now because you can it has touch features. The other one was, um, the other GoPros, you actually had to go through the settings a little bit more of a pain in the butt. But now click of a button, touch screen on the back, I can actually go from linear to wide. So wide is what I'm doing out vlogging. But when I just put that camera, just like this, in fact, 90% of my old videos that you've ever seen on any of those channels um, was with the GoPro. So I would turn it to linear mode so it wasn't so fish-eyed, so wide angle, and it was more square. And I would just put it in a ring light and with a green screen background, and I would make the most crystal clear videos of all time. People always ask me, geez, how'd you get that quality? 
Well, really, at the end of the day, it boils down to lighting. So I've got, you know, I got a $1,500 camera right now, but if I turn off, you know, some lighting and stuff, obviously I get dark, but you can see how grainy everything gets. So even the best of the best cameras out there, that's pretty cool. Touch button this is going to take a second to get back. They need the proper light. So that's what I found with phones, with GoPros, with anything. If you ever watch me out in the field, a lot of my partner, you know, who I've partnered with, uh, who partnered with us at eXp, and if I shoot videos with them, they'll see me. I'm always out there, even on a cloudy day. I'll be looking up at the sky and find that sun, even through the clouds, and I'm going to make sure that I have that sun hitting me because that is what I, I found the cameras need to make crystal clear. So even with that GoPro at 1080, you know, uh, at 1080 at 60 frames per second, just making sure I had, you know, I put it in the ring light in, in a dark controlled room and I would make crystal clear videos. Then this came out. This is the GoPro, geez, the GoPro Max. And I'm like, this is it. 360 videos. I made a couple of them. Has two 180 cameras. And this was going to allow me to go out and vlog and stitch together to where people can actually scroll with their finger or turn around with their phone. And it's like 3D simulation, 360 degree. So I thought that was going to be it. I did it twice. It was a pain in the butt. This thing is $500. And again, what does it have on that side? A screen. So you sit there and you and you look at yourself. And it also has six built-in microphones. So I'm like, cool, it'll get rid of the microphone here. I went and vlogged with it a couple times. And, and it, it just, these microphones in there with any wind, especially if you don't turn them off, you have to like single out a microphone. It just cuts in and out, cuts in and out, cuts in and out. So I paid 500 plus for this. I used it twice and it sits back there. So I'm not a huge fan of the GoPro. I just, or, or the GoPro Max. I would just get a GoPro Hero 8 Black. I think it is the most versatile camera, wide angle, incredible quality. And you can use it both linear and you can use it wide angle for vlogging. And it's going to be able to allow you to do basically any kind of video possible. And if you frame it that 1080 at 60 frames per second, that also allows you to slow your clip down. So that's why I shoot at 60 frames per second all the time because uh, sometimes you know, I hit the glare of the sun or a street sign and I'm able to slow that down in my editor and it doesn't chop, 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 chop. So when you shoot at like 24 frames per second and stuff, it will do that. Lastly, here is one for, hey Jackson, I'm not gonna get out in the community and I love just kind of sitting at my desk. That's where I'm most comfortable. That's what I teach. See, a lot of people will shove things down your throat. You need to do this. You need to do that. Well, I've coached agents who have, you know, gone out and vlogged like me or they're like, Jackson, you ain't catching me outside. It's so awkward. Okay, then shoot at your office, right? And so this was actually a camera that I still use to this day. This is the Logitech um, HD. It's like the 920, I think it was, 60 bucks. You can actually go in and, and change the settings on these and make them crystal clear. Um, and so what I actually do now is I use this Canon camera, the EOS that you're looking at or watching me with as my webcam now. So it's incredible quality, but I shot hundreds of videos with this and these are amazing. If you want to just use your computer to record and now you can record a bunch of videos just sitting in your office just like this, because at the end of the day, the most important part, just like I said, was the content, the things that you are teaching. We go to YouTube all the time or get caught down a rabbit hole watching videos and we don't care about the quality. If it's teaching us something or definitely if we searched it and the guy is out there with his cell phone and it's shaky, but it teaches you exactly how to change the oil in your car or how to fix your dryer or whatever it is, you've never even once thought about the quality. You're just like, oh my God, this is teaching me everything. So you can hook these little uh, Logitech webcams up and all of this stuff is down in our description. There's links to all this stuff, but these Logitech webcams uh, can hook right onto your computer and you will shoot some incredible 1080 videos. Um, they, these got really good quality. And so I know my business partner, Jesse, he uses one of these for hundreds and hundreds of videos just at his office, at his desk. So that is also what I would say is just something like that. At the end, it, it's really getting your message across. It's getting all of the information out there using the video scripts that we have taught on this channel. That's what's going to make you successful. So I don't say spend, you know, once you start shooting lots and lots and lots of videos, that's when you start upping the equipment because I was able to hook up this camera and it was still a pain in the butt. I had to watch a bunch of videos, even though I've shot thousands of videos, but at least I kind of understand video a little bit more. So you're going to pigeonhole yourself to where you won't shoot any content. If you go out there and buy this really nice camera that has all these settings and all this crazy equipment, when 
the end of the day, you can sit right in your office or go out on a park bench, shoot some videos about your city, about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play, and you will get ample amounts of business. I guarantee it. That's what I love doing too is is working with agents, partnering with agents. We have agents calling us every single day, you know, who want to partner with us at eXp. I give you all my courses, my boot camps, my live coaching, all of it for free because I want you to blow up. So if you have goals and dreams of, you know, leveraging video, leveraging, you know, systems and processes to build teams to close deals for you, reach out to me, Jackson at realagentnow.com to learn about those options. And these are the videos that are going to help you dominate on YouTube dominate with video, all of the above. Start clicking on those and you will be well on your way. And until the next video, guys, we'll catch you later.